Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1210, Calculus 1 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In the last video for lecture 34 in our series, we introduced a very powerful technique for computing limits known as L'Hopital's Rule. And we learned that L'Hopital's Rule applies only when we have a limit of the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. If we ever have one of these indeterminate forms, what we can do is we can take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator of the function and the limit and then reevaluate the limit. And if this limit turns out to be a number, that was the original limit. If it doesn't exist, it turns out that was the original limit as well. And so L'Hopital's rule is a great technique to use when you get zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So in this first video for lecture 35, I wanted to do some more exercises practicing L'Hopital's technique here. And so imagine we have the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of x over the cube root of x. Now notice that if we just start off by plugging in x is as infinity, we're going to get the natural log of infinity, so to speak, over the cube root of infinity. This will just become infinity over infinity. We have this indeterminate form, but it's important to check this because L'Hopital's rule doesn't apply if you don't have an indeterminate form. It only applies when you have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So what we're going to do is since we have the form infinity over infinity, we can apply L'Hopital's rule for which we're still going to take the limit as x approaches infinity, but now we're going to take the derivative of the natural log, divide that by the derivative of x to the one-third power. Since I am going to take derivatives, I want to switch from the cube root to the one-third power there. In which case, as we've seen many times before, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. The derivative of x to the 1 third by the usual power rule is going to be 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds power. We take the limit as x approaches infinity. Because we have x to the negative 1 third power, we can actually bring it above. Since we're dividing by 3, we can actually bring it above. And since we're dividing by x, that actually comes down below. So this is just a topsy-turvy mess right now. But in the end, it's going to become 3 times x to the 2 thirds power over x, if we simplify that thing. And notice we now have powers of x on top and bottom. We have x to the 2 thirds on top, x to the 1 third on the bottom. If we simplify the exponents, this would then give us the expression that we're taking the limit here uh, of 3 over x to the 1 third power. Take the limit as x approaches infinity. Now in this situation, as we allow x to go towards infinity, we're going to end up with 3 over the cube root of infinity again. But this just becomes 3 over infinity, which this is going to squish down to be 0. So by L'Hopital's rule, since this limit is 0, that implies the original limit was 0 as well. Let's do one more example. Uh, let's take the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of x minus x all over x cubed. Now notice if we plug in x equals 0, we're going to get tangent of 0 minus 0 all over 0 cubed. Getting a 0 in the denominator is concerning because dividing by 0 is, is typically a problem. But you'll also notice that since tangent of 0 is itself 0, it's the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So I can just hear Princess Leia telling me right now that there's still hope, right? The limit could still be something, right? Division by 0 is only a problem if you're not also multiplying by zero. Since we have a zero over zero, we have this clash of titans going on here. Who's more powerful, multiplication by zero or division by zero? What it means to us is that we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And so we're going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So we take the limit as x approaches zero. We take the derivative of tangent of x minus x. And then we'll take the derivative of the denominator separately. We're not going to use the quotient rule. We're taking the derivative of the top separately from the derivative of the bottom. Uh, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of x is going to be 1 here. It's the negative 1. Uh, by the power rule in the denominator, we're going to get the derivative is going to be 3x squared. If we plug in x equals 0 at this moment, we see we're going to get secant squared of 0 minus 1 over 3 times 0 squared. The denominator, again, is going to be 0. But what happens in the numerator? Well, we have to, uh, we have to compute secant of, you know, of zero in this situation, which recall, of course, that secant of secant zero is just one over cosine of zero squared, which cosine is going to be one. One over one is still one. You square that. You're going to get this one over one in the numerator. And so this still looks like zero over zero. Okay. What does that mean for us? It just means we're going to do L'Hopital's rule one more time. We keep on doing it as long as the 
function has this indeterminate form zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So we're gonna take the limit still as x approaches zero here. Uh, we now have to take the derivative of secant squared x minus one. And then the denominator, we're gonna take the derivative of three x squared. In the numerator, when we take the derivative, well, the derivative of the negative one is gonna be, since it's a constant, it's just gonna be zero. So using the chain rule for secant, we do the outer derivative first. We're gonna get a two secant theta. That's our outer derivative. Then we have to times that by the inner derivative, which is gonna be a secant tangent. And that's gonna be our numerator. The denominator, we're gonna get a six X. And so let's see what happens going forward here. Well, I noticed there's a factor of two common to top and bottom. So there's a factor of two, the two goes into six three times. Uh, then we are gonna plug in X equals zero, uh, for which case we're gonna get secant of zero. There's actually a secant squared, right? So secant is zero squared. Then you're gonna get tangent of zero all over three times zero. What do we have here? We have, holy cow, zero over zero again, right? This is gonna look like a one squared times zero over three times zero. This is just zero over zero. Well, guess what? We can do it again. Do it as many times as necessary to get this thing done. So we take the, we do L'Hopital's rule one more time, take the limit as X approaches zero. Uh, we're taking this time the derivative of secant squared X times tangent of X. This sits above the three X, which we're gonna take the derivative of here, for which we can see that what's going on here is that every time we take the derivative of the denominator, we lose a power of X. So in this situation, the derivative of three X is just gonna be a three. So in terms of the denominator, there's no longer gonna be a zero in the denominator here, okay? Um, for which case then, if we take the derivative of the top, uh, by the product rule, we're gonna take the derivative of secant squared, which as we saw before is a two secant squared tangent. But then there's, there's still a tangent sticking around, we're gonna get a tangent squared. But then we have to take, for the product rule, we take the second part, we take the derivative of tangent, which the derivative of tangent is a secant squared. So we're actually gonna get a secant to the fourth power there. Um, and so then as we plug in X equals zero, we end up with, we have our resolution finally. We're gonna get, for the first part, if you plug in zero into a tangent, you're gonna get a zero. So that disappears. We're gonna end up with a secant to the fourth, uh, zero over three. So we're gonna get one third as the limit. So holy cow, we did it. So in the end, we eventually found the limit to be one third. We had to use L'Hopital's rule like three times. Now it turns out L'Hopital's rule is not the only technique that one could use. There are situations that alternative strategies that could be used to avoid L'Hopital's rule. For example, right, let's take, let's kind of go back in this situation right here. What if we, if we wanted to, we could have actually avoided L'Hopital's rule. We had this limit as X approaches zero of secant squared X tangent x over 3x. With a little bit of manipulation, we could actually factor this thing, taking the limit as x approaches zero of, we're gonna get a secant squared x over three times cosine of x. Where did the cosine come from? Well, we also have a sine of x over x. Basically what we're doing here is we're recognizing that tangent is sine over cosine. We're gonna separate the sine from the cosine because when X goes to zero, secant and cosine both go to one. So no big deal there. But what about sine X over X? Hey, that's also equal to one. We've learned that previously. The limit as X approaches zero of sine of X over X is just a one. And so we see this turns out to be a one times one over three times one, which is one third as well. So we could use other techniques combined with L'Hopital's rule. And in fact, if you are curious about that, take the limit as X approaches zero of sine of X over X, you know, if you ever forgot that this is equal to one, you could actually use L'Hopital's rule because this thing has the indeterminate form zero over zero. When you take the derivative, you end up with the limit of cosine of X over one, which then is gonna give you one over one, which is equal to one. Now we originally approved, we originally proved this statement using uh, uh, the squeeze theorem, honestly, and you can use L'Hopital's rule, but by remembering some of these limits we've already computed, like sine X over X going to one, you can actually avoid some of the subsequent calculations of derivatives. So I don't want you to throw everything out uh, that we've learned previously how to compute limits. Uh, no, we should just think of L'Hopital's rule not as like one, you know, the magic tool, the silver bullet that will solve all problems. No, this is just one more tool in our box. We can use the other tools we've already developed to compute limits of these indeterminate forms.